And the interesting thing is, Del, because we have a different framework of thinking to look at these issues, we're asking different questions to what the mainstream geologists are asking. They haven't taken samples and, and cut these thin sections to look at the grains under the microscope. But that's, that's very basic to understand. People can't... It's hard for people to grasp, but you know, you, we go to, we're going to go to the microscope scale to explain and, and look at the timing right. of the formation of mountains. Right. We're zoomed in on this research project on these folds, but they are part of a bigger context. What produced these folds? So at the end of the flood, as the ocean basins were sinking and pulling the flood waters off the continents, an oceanic plate from the Pacific Basin went under Western North America at a fairly flat angle. And as a result, this plate caused a number of mountains and plateaus to rise up almost to the middle of the continent, which is why there are so many high plateaus and mountains in the western United States. One enormous area that was lifted up was the Colorado Plateau. But the plateau didn't lift up evenly, and so some areas were pushed up higher than others. Now here's what's interesting, Dell. A very large fold that goes through that area, hundreds of miles long, it's the same one Andrew was referring to, and it's called the East Kaibab Monocline, where mono refers to one bend or one fold. The monocline formed a dam. Water started collecting in the lower area, and so a big lake developed and eventually found a weak point in the monocline and started to flow through it. And it was that catastrophic dam burst, we believe, that carved out the Grand Canyon. And so it's because of the carving of the canyon that we have these folds exposed to view. And these are the places that we sampled. Let me show you on a map. Uh, where we oh yeah, I'd love yeah. to see that. So this is a geological map.